I just want to remind you that it's very important that even if you feel confused and even if you feel that you don't know something, that you shift your meaning around it. And what I mean by that is that first and foremost, confusion always precedes breakthroughs. I'm really struggling to keep my faith in the universe. I feel like I'm doing all the things, but everything is falling apart. My business is struggling. My relationship is struggling. And I feel like I don't even know who I am. Any advice or guidance would be helpful. I get really excited when I read questions like this and not because I'm some weird sadistic person (laughs) where I like to see people struggle. That's not it at all. I just know thinking like a scientist (laughs) based on all the patterns that I've experienced in my life that I've watched my students go through, that I've watched my friends go through, that I've watched my clients go through. When we find ourselves in moments like this, it means the universe is really forcing us to let go of the how. Just completely let go of the how. Because there are desires that you may have, like for example, in your business, you may have the desire to create something that gives you financial freedom, for example. But there's so many more directions and so many more paths to financial freedom than having a business, for example, right? Or like your relationship, you might have a desire to feel a certain way with another person. It doesn't have to be that relationship or the relationship doesn't have to look in that way. There's just so much freedom in like we can have what we want And we can allow the universe to help us remove the old foundation and then help us build the new skyscraper. Because you're here in MBA because we're building skyscrapers. But before we came into MBA, we have a one-story house with a one-story house foundation. And in order for us to build a skyscraper, we need to remove the old foundation. And the universe comes in and starts building the skyscraper for us the moment we allow it to just remove the old foundation. We allow the demolition crew to come in. When we resist the demolition crew, that's when we struggle to have faith in the universe. When we resist the demolition crew, that's when we experience struggle. But struggle is just a perspective. It doesn't have to seem like a struggle. It can be, you can see it from the perspective of like, oh my God, this is so exciting. The skyscraper is being, being built right now. That's how I choose to see it. Every time she is falling apart in front of me, I'm like, wow, I can't wait to see what this turns out to. <laughs> like, I can't wait to see what this turns into. I cannot wait to see the skyscraper get built because just the old foundation wouldn't be removed if there wasn't a new foundation. Nature abhors a vacuum. Something has to come into its place and it will. And by the way, I'm not saying that like, your business is going to go away or your relationship is going to end or anything like that. It's just going to, it's getting reconstructed. It's going through a little plastic surgery. Okay. Your business is going through plastic surgery. Your relationship's going through plastic surgery. It's going to look a little different and it's going to be so much better than what you could have imagined. So that's my advice. That's my guidance is just to like, just don't put pressure on yourself to have things be different. Just be with it be in the discomfort of it and then use your tools to help you clear the discomfort as it comes up while you're in this in-between process. This sounds a lot like what Mikosi calls the void and the void is not a bad place to be. It's actually a very powerful place to be in because what comes on the other side is a total rebirth. You will not recognize yourself on the other side of this and I for that I am so excited for you. Catherine, what if I feel stuck all the time and I don't know how to get out of of this stuck energy? Or what if I have I don't know syndrome, right? Which is causing me confusion. And I just want to remind you that it's very important that even if you feel confused and even if you feel that you don't know something, that you shift your meaning around it. And what I mean by that is that first and foremost, confusion always precedes breakthroughs, right? There's a typically a pause of some sort before there is massive action, okay? 
when you are confused, usually that means that you're building new neural connections around something. And the way if you just let that confusion be and you just move through that confusion and just know that it doesn't mean anything about you and it's just something that you're experiencing, when you get to the other side of it, you're going to have a breakthrough. So I love to celebrate confusion. I love to celebrate not knowing something. I love to look at it as like, wow, life is really going to surprise me with something really cool if I just let this be and I don't force it away. Now, another thing that really comes up is that when you say to yourself, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what I want. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, right? What that does to your subconscious mind Because remember, your subconscious mind sees things in pictures and colors and figures and metaphors. What is like the internal representation that you create when you keep telling yourself, I don't know, I'm stuck? You build this wall inside your mind. You're building this barrier to knowing. You're building this barrier to action. You're literally, your subconscious mind is like building this brick wall. Okay? And so... You might want to shift that by saying, even if I don't know right now, I'm in the process of knowing. How jealousy affects the manifestation process and how can we let go of it? By the way, girl, I'm loving the Tokyo tour. Thank you so much. So I love this question and I've talked about it many times on my Insta feed before. And jealousy is something that I am very well acquainted with. And I'll give you guys some background. So growing up, I was very, 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 very poor, obviously. And, um, you know, things, of course, like my my parents climbed, you know, their own version of a corporate ladder. My mom graduated from nursing school. My dad became a chef. My mom then remarried or, or actually they didn't marry until much later in life. But my mom started dating this guy who became my stepdad and he had some money and blah, blah, blah. So things like improved as my life went on. But we started off extremely broke. And I had a best friend growing up who also had struggling immigrant parents. And at some point at around the age of 10, I would say 10, 11, her father, who was a plastic surgeon in Europe, tried to pass, you know, all of his boards and medical examinations in the in the United States was unable to do what he wanted to do in the United States. So he just picked up his stuff, had their parents divorced, they split up and he moved back to Europe. And as soon as he moved back to Europe, his career, of course, took off because he was already a pretty successful plastic surgeon before he left. He just came back, he picked up, he had connections and um, became very, very successful. So he moved back and as soon as his career took off, he started to send my best friend a ton of money. And every time he would come back to to the United States to visit, um, they'd go on shopping sprees and whatever. So like essentially my best friend um, went from, we went from both of us being broke, these two broke immigrant kids to her having, you know, essentially money and nice things and luxuries and travel and Chanel bags and Louis Vuitton bags and all this nice stuff versus my parents constantly telling me that they cannot afford things all the time. So they the the song of my childhood is we can't afford that. We can't afford that. We can't afford this. We can't afford that. So over time, I became very, very jealous of my my best friend. And I remember also not only feeling jealousy toward her in just the stuff that she had, It didn't really affect our relationship. Like we were still really good best friends, but I just hated seeing, um, I just hated, I dreaded when her father would come back to the United States and uh, because that meant that they would go on shopping sprees and buy all kinds of amazing stuff and blah, 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 and and they would make me feel so left out. And of course, as a child, you don't really like understand, you know, there's not like, oh, I'm going to create my own success. It's just like, why, why does she have this? And why do I not have this? And another thing that happened over time is that I remember my best friend telling me sometimes like, no, I couldn't touch certain things, like certain things were too expensive for me to touch. And then when I visited, when I was 16, I went to visit um, her dad in Moscow with my parents. And when we were there, 
He lived in a, a this apartment that was actually his childhood apartment, but it was completely remodeled on the inside. It was just gorgeous, like a super luxury, like what you would expect luxury to look like in Moscow. And I remember putting, like bringing in my suitcase and then I guess my suitcase leaned against the wall and he said to me, do not scratch my walls. Like, don't put your dirty suitcase against my my walls. And I was like, oh, okay, sh- sorry. You know, like I was just like so jet lagged and tired. I was like, oops, okay, sorry. And then I remember putting my my feet on the coffee table as like, you know, most people, they put their feet on the coffee table and he was like, no, 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 you need to take your feet off. You can't even imagine how much this coffee table costs. It, way, it costs way more than anything that you would find in your house. And I just remember like constantly feeling so left out and so like my identity growing up as a kid was one of I, I don't belong in this community of money. I don't belong with wealth. Wealth isn't something that is normalized for me. And this is just not for me. I don't deserve this. I'm not worthy of this. And so I've been really accustomed with this feeling of, of, of jealousy and feeling left out. And then when I learned about the law of attraction at 16, uh, just a few months after that experience, everything changed for me. And it was the book, The Secret, that really, really actually helped me break through. And I have felt extremely excited for people when they have the thing that I want ever since I read The Secret. And there was just like one thing. Remember how I said it's one thing that could change your life. I just remember it was either it was either from reading The Secret, watching the movie, or maybe it was a thought process that I had afterwards. Maybe no one actually said this, but I just remember it. And it was something like when you see your dream car driving past you on the road, that means that you are one step closer to having it in your life. That means you're one step closer to attracting it into your reality. And the only way you can mess this up is if you feel upset, angry, or jealous when the car drives past you because you will just attract more of everyone else having what they want, but you having lack of that thing that you want in your own life. And so you might want the Ferrari or the Lamborghini or the Audi or the whatever, but you will never actually have it because you keep resisting it by feeling anything less than excitement or gratitude for when you see it. And it's the strongest test when it's like your best friend or someone that you love or someone that you know, or your coworker or someone online even that you follow, who is experiencing what you really want to experience. And I say that jealousy is not necessarily a bad thing because jealousy is actually an insight into your actual desires. So why are you feeling triggered? Why are you feeling this emotion? Why is this springing something within you? It's not anything more than just the fact that you saw something that you actually want for yourself. And that's a beautiful thing. And then the fact that someone in your reality, because you're experiencing it, you're seeing it, you saw a picture of it, right? You saw it online or you saw that your friend had it or you saw that your coworker had it or whatever. Like, for instance, a lot of women out there really, really, really want to get engaged and married. And so anytime a woman that they know, like their coworker or friend shows up to work the next day or shows up to the next hangout with a ring on her finger you know, the girls who really, really, really want to get engaged, they of course feel jealous because that's a desire within them and they feel like they can't have it. The only reason you feel jealous is because it's a desire that you want and it's a subconscious programming that's telling you that you're not worthy or deserving of having it. Um, It's a scarcity response. It's a lack response that there is not enough in this world to go around for me to have this too. And there's a limited amount of dream cars out there, a limited amount of rings out there, a limited amount of soulmates or limited amount of whatever. And so when it comes to jealousy, it's understanding that the world is abundant. When something shows up in your reality, you have to feel excited. You got to feel genuine excitement as if that thing actually happened to you. And this is something that I've been practicing for a long time. So when it came to my dream car, which is an Audi R8, every time I would see it, I would get so excited as if I am driving the car or as if I just got the car. 
or whenever I would see, like, for instance, when I really wanted Brennan to propose to me, and I'm looking at him right now, so I'm looking to the side, and I really wanted Brennan to propose to me, I let go of this expectation toward him because I didn't want to put that kind of pressure on him. And whenever I would see women get engaged on Facebook or on Instagram, I would get so excited for them as if that thing actually happened to me. And that's the key there. This is how you keep the attraction process coming in your favor. This is how you keep drawing in your desire and not just cutting it off because of jealousy. Jealousy cuts off the attraction process. It actually creates resistance between you and what you actually want. So it's about transmuting jealousy into excitement. My question relates to the never ever give up and don't use the maybe it's not for me line. What if some path I'm pursuing is truly not meant for me and the universe is showing me rejection so that I recalibrate and reroute my inner GPS? So at what point do I keep pressing on and when do I realize that this isn't where I'm supposed to be heading? Who here has a similar question? This one is very popular and I judge it just by like sometimes I'll scroll and I'll see some questions have a lot of likes on them and a lot of comments. It's kind of like how I see like the voting system of who, which question is like dying to get answered. So this is one of them. And I'm curious how many of you guys are trying to figure this out? Like at what point do you actually give up, right? At what point do you keep going when you're just like, when it's fucking hard and you're just, there's so much resistance coming up. Like how do we know what the difference is? There's a huge difference between the what and the how here. So what I'm referring to when I say never, ever, 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 ever give up is referring to the what. So by what is, I mean, your desire, right? Your desires, your true heart's desires are meant for you always and forever. So if you have a desire of building a million dollar business and it's a true heart's desire and you're so excited about it, but the last six businesses of yours have not worked out, you might think that the desire itself is no longer meant for you. But that's just not the fucking truth. That's where people give up far too easily is when it comes to the what. But the how, some people get really stuck in the how where they think that there's only one way to get to that outcome and they keep revisiting and they keep going and they keep going and they keep going and they keep going and the universe is trying to recalibrate and reroute them, but they keep being stubborn. and They're like, no, it has to work out this way. Most people give up because they're confused by the how and they think the reroutes and recalibrations are signs that the desire isn't meant for them when in actuality it's just a sign that the way it currently is coming about isn't meant for them. Here's how you can determine if the how is no longer working for you. For example, I wanted to create a successful business for myself. I wanted to experience both time freedom and I also wanted to help change people's lives. It's pretty broad, right? It's pretty general. You can create a lot of businesses that help you do this. You can create a lot of products. You can create a lot of services that help you accomplish this, right? There's there's a myriad of ways for you to accomplish this desire. For me, it was beach body versus manifestation babe. One, I felt incredibly drained every single day. Just at some point, every day it drained me. It exhausted me. I was so uninspired. I was so overwhelmed. And if I wasn't careful about understanding the difference between the what and the how, I may have taken that example as a sign that business is not for me, that I am not meant to experience time freedom and being able to change people's lives because my beach body business wasn't thriving and wasn't successful. And at least to my standards, to some people's standards, it may have been very successful. I have really high standards, so it wasn't successful to me. And I felt absolutely drained. I feel I felt uninspired. I felt super exhausted, super overwhelmed. Just I felt like I was going through f-ing mud. And the moment that I started manifestation, babe, again, keeping the same what in mind, it's the same overarching vision. 
I wanted to build a business that gave me time freedom and allowed me to help a lot of people. When I started Manifestation Babe, it just felt so joyful. It wasn't easy, but it felt easy, if that makes sense. It was like I was inspired. I was lit up. I was just on fire. I was so creative. I kept creating and creating and creating. It was just so joyful for me to do this business, to build this, to build this business. And so that's what the difference is. It's not the what, it's the how. And most people give up the what because they get frustrated with the how. And again, this is like such a common theme as you guys are noticing by now. The how is not your job. (laughs) The how must be released. There are so many details that you're completely unaware of that are working in your favor. And the recalibrations and reroutes that are happening are happening for the how and not the what. So let's say that you are someone who's currently feeling that way about some sort of path that you're on. Are any of you guys feeling like drained, uninspired, exhausted by the way that you're doing something right now on the way to getting to a what? An outcome. If so, my biggest recommendation is for you guys to take a break. And that's what I did with Beachbody. If you guys remember, I went to go get a nine to five job because I wanted to give myself a break. I didn't want to struggle financially. I wanted to have money to live off of. Even though I was living on my grandma's couch, I still bought my own food. I paid for my car, I paid for gas. Like I still had expenses. And so I didn't want to put that burden on my family. And so I got a job, but I let myself have a fucking break. I took probably, I would say three months off for me to just figure shit out between actively working Beachbody and actively working Manifestation Babe. I just allowed myself to take a break, to take a few months off of actively manifesting this goal. And I gave myself space to be fully open and see what else is out there for me. And through giving myself permission to just, you know, breathe, give up temporarily. Again, temporarily, it's not actually giving up. Just like just give yourself some space. You'll see that what you're getting wrapped up about is the how, not the what. Okay. And then ever since I gave myself that break, guys, I stepped into a freaking how that was way more in alignment with me and clearly is still working for me. And I enjoy and I love, and it's my passion. And though I change and tweak certain things about it here and there, it's still consistently something so in alignment with me. And that's because I gave myself space. If I still was like, no, Beachbody is the only way, right? I'd be fucking miserable by now. If you don't want a job, you don't have to have a job. (laughs) I'm not telling you guys that the way that it happened to me is how it's supposed to happen to everybody. So I'm not saying the key is to get a nine to five job. No, 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 no. That's just my path. That's what helped me give myself a break. For you, it might just be on a mental level. It might just be taking the pressure off mentally. For me, it had to be mentally, physically, emotionally, because I was just done with it. Like I just, I just found another way for me to have a break. For you, it just might be like mentally, I don't want to think about it for a couple weeks and just see what happens and see what comes from that space that you create for yourself. 